Welcome, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, Europe. Good morning, California. And good evening, India. Uh, it's a pleasure for us uh, this Friday to have Dr. Shambhugi Meyer as a speaker. He is a lead scientist and is a principal investigator at Stanford Pulse Institute, California, at the, the Slack National Accelerator Laboratory. Actually, I'm feeling sorry for him because he woke up to give this talk at 7 a.m. Uh, in his local time, but I'm looking forward for the talk as well. His research interests are on strong field quantum physics and nonlinear X-ray science. He's received his PhD in physics from Kansas State University in 2007 and went to University of Michigan for a postdoc job before he joined Stanford in 2009. And if you go to our website, you'll be able to see also uh, more about his journey. There's a link. Uh, we, we have all our speakers in a gallery. So you can see they are amazing scientists, all of them in, in their own right. So we're ready to start. Thank you all. If you would like to ask questions, please put again, as usual, your questions in the Q&A tab. We're gonna have a look at that later on. And uh, it's a pleasure to have Dr. Meyer as a speaker. And Jambu, feel free to start. We're ready to go. Okay, so let me share my screen. Okay, hopefully you uh, see my correct screen and hear me okay? Yes, this is great. Good. Thanks uh, organizers uh, for uh, this uh, opportunity uh, to connect uh, uh, to uh, the worldwide uh, audience. Uh, I am uh, today speaking from uh, Stanford uh, University, which is pretty close to um, the beautiful city of San Francisco uh, that uh, you might uh, consider um, uh, at your next uh, vacation um, as we are trying to you know, put uh, the pandemic uh, behind us. Uh, we are making uh, progress uh, and uh, uh, hopefully the, the summer um, is you know, at least uh, from our side uh, looks uh, promising. And uh, of course you have to normalize uh, this uh, to the situation in, in your areas, but uh, I think we are, um, we are pretty close to put, uh, this, uh, you know, more than one year of uh, you know, almost uh, shelter in place behind us. Um, okay, so, um, um, so we are going to discuss on high harmonic uh, spectroscopy of uh, quantum materials today. Um, and uh, this work uh, is primarily funded by the uh, US Department of Energy. And uh, let me begin by uh, thanking uh, my wonderful set of uh, collaborators at uh, Stanford. Um, my group uh, collaborates with the groups of uh, Professor David Rees, uh, uh, Professor uh, Tony Hines, and uh, Professor uh, Fang Lu. Um, and uh, for um, theoretical work uh, on some of the works that I'm going to talk about today, uh, we collaborate with uh, Alexis Sakon at uh, Postac uh, Korea um, for a sample um, uh, growth. Um, we uh, collaborate with uh, uh, the group uh, at University of Michigan. And um, the first um, uh, solid state harmonic generation experiments were uh, conducted in collaboration with the groups of um, uh, Professor Ludi Morrow and uh, uh, Pierre Agostini at the Ohio State. So this is the outline. So we will um, just uh, briefly review the success uh, of high harmonic spectroscopy in the gas media. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the uh, now the first decade uh, of uh, solid state high harmonics uh, um, and uh, quickly uh, try to move to the applications uh, of uh, this uh, process uh, to, you know, as a novel spectroscopic uh, tool for quantum materials. I will give two examples, uh, one for uh, topological insulators and another for 
uh, 2D uh, crystals. Um, so I would like to um, just um, uh, you know, take a, a brief um, look at this uh, semi-classical model of high harmonic generation uh, that uh, is so popular in the gas phase. Um, and uh, this becomes instructive um, later on to compare the dynamics uh, for solid state harmonics. Here, um, you know, as, as you know, the, uh, the um, in presence of the strong laser field, uh, the electron tunnels through the barrier and uh, gets into the continuum. And uh, when the laser cycle reverses uh, its direction, uh, it um, actually comes back uh, and uh, with some probability, it can find uh, the parent uh, atom and this uh, uh, recombination gives rise to the emission of uh, high harmonic photons uh, given by this uh, pretty simple relation, which says that the, the maximum cutoff energy of um, uh, harmonics uh, would uh, scale quadratically to the electric field uh, of the drive laser. Because uh, the, the electron actually comes back and coherently combines uh, with uh, the uh, the parent ion, uh, this uh, gives us with, um, you know, opens up a lot of opportunities uh, that that uh, most of us uh, in this audience are actually quite familiar with. Um, so, um, so in, in the experiment, uh, the typical setup uh, looks uh, like uh, this uh, on the left. Uh, here, uh, you know, you take uh, a, a typical, you know, Thai sapphire laser, you focus into a gas target, and the harmonics are produced um, um, in the on the other side, uh, and propagating with the laser. And this is the typical spectrum uh, that you observe um, here. You see the cutoff energy is around 100 dB. Um, and um, uh, this uh, feature uh, of harmonic, and, you know, these all uh, three features of tunneling um, and uh, acceleration. Um, and, and then the recombination, the coherent recombination has been utilized uh, um, in, in the spectroscopy. This is just one example of um, such a spectroscopy um, in the gas phase. Um, essentially here, um, in the case of uh, a diatomic nitrogen molecule, the angle dependent uh, high harmonic response that's shown here was used uh, to actually probe uh, the underlying uh, electronic orbital uh, uh, homo orbital of the molecule. And uh, you know this is uh, one of the first works and this has uh, you know, excited a lot of um, you know um, uh, created a lot of opportunities in the uh, molecular systems uh, um, you know for the last uh, two decades or so. Um, however, in the case of solid, um, you know, because of the mainly because of the damage uh, of this uh, solid target uh, at high intensities, um, the you know uh, much of the progress uh, was actually just focused on you know micro machining and you know cutting uh, to finer uh, edges and things like that. Not not much of uh, spectroscopy until um, you know about a decade ago. Uh, so we try to mitigate uh, this uh, laser damage. Um, and uh, so this was a good combination to achieve that. Uh, the combination of uh, the sample zinc oxide and uh, uh, mid-infrared uh, laser fields. You, you can see uh, this is the band structure of zinc oxide. The main idea was uh, that uh, the, uh, the uh, photon energy, uh, you know, when it was, uh, um, much lower than the band gap. In this case, um, the ratio of the band gap to photon energy is about 10, right? So this was a good choice, uh, you know, as, as you might, um, um, you know, uh, recall, um, you know, because um, many of us um, have been working on gas with high harmonics, right? Argon uh, atom has ionization potential of around, uh, you know, 15 EV, and we typically use uh, the 1.5 EV uh, laser to you know, excite. Uh, so that's a you know ratio of 10. So we got that. Uh, you know that was a good start. And also there are a couple of uh, other reasons why we tried uh, zinc oxide. Uh, so one is uh, its um, uh, first uh, conduction band, as shown here, is fairly non-parabolic and it is more or less uh, separated from 
uh, everything else, including uh, the higher uh, line uh, conduction bands. Uh, so we wanted to you know, pick a relatively simple system uh, so we could um, um, understand what is going on at the microscopic uh, level with not too much difficulty, at least uh, that was the idea. And also we could, uh, because of this uh, 3.3 you know, 3, uh, EV band gap, uh, we could probe uh, near the band is, uh, for example, using uh, you know, uh, probes that are easily available in laboratories, uh, such as the double tie sharp wire and to see what happens at the band gap. So they, these were a couple of uh, reasons uh, why uh, zinc oxide was um, a suitable candidate. And um, this was um, performed, um, uh, it, you know, as I said earlier, in collaboration with uh, uh, the groups of uh, uh, Ludimaro and uh, Pierre Agostini. Uh, at, at the Ohio State here, we uh, took uh, the fuel cycle, mid infrared laser pulses, and focused to a zinc oxide crystal, uh, and we measured uh, harmonics in, in the transmission. So it was uh, essentially a half a millimeter thick zinc oxide crystal that uh, you know um, I and uh, my collaborator uh, David Rees uh, you know, took with us in our pockets. Uh, drove uh, three hours from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, this this was when I was at Michigan um, to Columbus, Ohio, and and tried uh, these experiments. Uh, and one of the things that we noted here uh, was this high energy cutoff. Um, actually, was a, you know we found that it scaled uh, linearly to the electric field as opposed to the you know, expected quadratic uh, uh, scaling from the uh, recollision model in the gas phase. So, um, so I, you know, I, I would like to take a, uh, take some time to, um, you know, compare uh, the atomic uh, and uh, the uh, solid state uh, pictures. For that, uh, first, uh, let me uh, um, let me uh, transfer this real space picture that everyone uh, knows about to the momentum space. Um, here, um, you essentially keep these uh, three nice uh, steps of tunneling, acceleration, and recombination. Um, and you, the, the electron tunnels uh, from the, the, the flat um, parent ion uh, band, if you like, uh, to the continuum, uh, which is uh, parabolic, uh, just because the, the free electron motion uh, is parabolic, right? And um, you know, after some acceleration, the electron comes back and recombines. Uh, and this difference energy is uh, given up in the form of uh, the high energy photon. So this is the momentum space uh, representation um, of uh, the famous uh, you know, three-step model. Um, and uh, in the solid, uh, solid can be thought of, at least in very simple um, terms, uh, a, periodically array, a peri periodic array of densely packed uh, atomic sites. And they are dressed by strong laser fields. Uh, when you do that, you can uh, immediately see uh, there are you know, some potential uh, problems, right, with respect to the uh, atomic uh, picture. First, uh, this driven electron could uh, scatter from uh, nearest neighbor sites as well. Um, and the second, uh, you know, the electron uh, being is being driven in the periodic potential, and uh, you know, as uh, as you know. Uh, the this when the electron is is going through this uh, block oscillations and if uh, it, it can uh, beat uh, the typical dephasing in solids it could just radiate without requiring uh, the um, recombination uh, in the momentum space uh, this is uh, more standard uh, in the solid state uh, physics community right so you, you have bands uh, and in, again in the very simple form a valence band um, and conduction band, they are separated by this band gap. Um, and uh, the electron um, uh, tunnels in presence of the strong field from valence band to conduction band, then gets uh, driven in the, in the electron is, is driven in the conduction band, uh, hole is driven in the valence band. At some point uh, in time, uh, the electron uh, recombines to the hole and this difference energy comes out in the form of um, high harmonic photons. This electron could uh, recombine uh, to its hole um, at different times um, as well, uh, right? Uh, so, so that that picture is coming up later. Uh, there is another possibility of this, um, you know, radiation just from uh, the single band, uh, which is uh, also known as the intraband radiation. So, as, as as I said earlier, um, okay. So this is a bigger uh, picture, maybe easier to see. Um, again, uh, three steps, uh, right, uh, to describe uh, the, the generation process uh, considering the interband uh, uh, channel. 
in the first step, uh, the electron tunnels from a valence band to conduction band, leaving behind uh, a hole in the valence band. In presence of the strong uh, field, uh, both electron uh, and holes, uh, they, uh, they get accelerated in their uh, respective bands. And then they recombine at certain time, uh, producing that high energy photon, right? So that's the you know, highest energy photon that, that, that could come out from uh, these two bands, right? Uh, given by the maximum band gap energy. At different times, uh, they could also uh, recombine and produce uh, lower energy uh, harmonics. Uh, and you would have uh, basically a spectrum, uh, harmonic spectrum uh, with photon energies, you know, in this picture, uh, expanding from the smallest band gap of the system to the biggest band gap of uh, the same system. And uh, uh, the further uh, high uh, energy harmonics uh, could come out if the electron gets, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, driven to higher uh, conduction bands and such. So you could kind of see, right, immediately if, um, you know, you know if uh, this, in using this picture, you could, uh, if you could measure the emission times of these uh, harmonics, uh, then you essentially could map out uh, the momentum dependent uh, band gap, right? So this was exactly what was uh, done uh, by Julio Vampa and his colleagues uh, um, here in this very nice example. Um, here they measure the the uh, the emission time of uh, harmonics from a zinc oxide, the, you know, the same zinc oxide crystal. Uh, so this is the measurement data, and uh, uh, and the idea here is, uh, you know, as I described earlier, uh, and and uh, um, you know, there is there are limitations. Uh, for example, this is the only range of uh, you know energy that at least, uh, you know, this is, this is spectrum provides. Uh, and nevertheless, uh, this is a good gesture, all right, um, of uh, the strength of high harmonic generation process, uh, you know, that uh, could um, probe uh, the, um, the band structure in the momentum space. Uh, of course, this is using an interband uh, model. And also, uh, you know, similarly, there are other nice works uh, such as uh, directly using the intraband uh, model to uh, probe uh, the conduction bands of uh, crystal quartz uh, from uh, Lipterius uh, um, uh, group. Um, and uh, so the idea here is that, uh, you know, uh, using the band structure and uh, perhaps uh, you know, when you combine with, uh, you know, time resolved uh, measurements, uh, you have the ability to uh, probe, uh, the, um, uh, probe the um, electronic band structure. You know, perhaps, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that I could bet on, right, in terms of like getting really high resolution band structure in, a, in terms of uh, competing with other uh, more standard, uh, con you know, conventional solid state methods. Uh, but, uh, you know, but this is a nonlinear approach and, and could uh, you know, be complementary. Similarly, um, you know, you could do the same thing uh, in the, uh, in the real space, uh, same thing, meaning that not now, not the band structure, but, uh, you know, it's kind of similar to the nitrogen molecule example that we discussed. Um, so this is uh, the magnesium oxide crystals here. What we did is we uh, rotated this crystal um, with respect to the laser field for a linearly polarized case. And you see, this is the experimental data. This is raw data, okay? Considering a cubic crystal, which is fairly isotropic, this is a very, uh, an isotropic signal, as you can see, um, kind of like the nitrogen molecule, right? So when when you have uh, the uh, laser um, polarizing along the cubic directions, in this case, you get maxima. And uh, you know, and we use uh, a relatively simple model uh, to understand the uh, the anisotropy. Uh, this is the picture. Essentially, uh, we consider the electron gets uh, uh, tunnel. Uh, excited from uh, the oxygen, uh, the valence band, which is mostly uh, coming from the oxygen to P and then uh, to magnesium, uh, the, the conduction band, uh, which is mostly coming from uh, magnesium 3S. So, uh, and we, we do take the band motion of the electron for linear depolarized uh, field. Uh, this looks, you know, pretty lousy, but uh, when you change the polarization, then it could be very interesting as you can see here. Uh, this, this is uh, um, when you change the ellipticity in the laser field from linear, uh, this is the trajectory for linear, 
and this is for elliptical. And when you are, um, you know, circular, this you know trajectory is bent, right? And this is the um, measured uh, harmonic spectrum as a function of intensity of a single harmonic, sorry, as a function of laser intensity. And you can see uh, the, the intensity changes uh, dramatically. And uh, it, it is the highest uh, at the uh, you know linear polarization. And when you um, when you um, are elliptical, uh, it goes down. Uh, you know, in in the in this case, for example, uh, this uh, trajectory is completely missing uh, the nearest neighbor atomic sites, and that is uh, you know that corresponds to the minima. Um, so basically, since this is a single crystal solid, and we can change polarization, rotate crystal, and do these nice things, um, and we can probe uh, you know the 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 charge distribution um, in the crystals, um, and uh, this is also important. Uh, and could be complementary to X-ray methods because, as we know, the optical methods are more sensitive to the balance uh, charge density, which is uh, what what you care, right? In terms of uh, understanding the chemistry of uh, the system. Um, so this is um, another um, example in terms of uh, you know trying to understand the similarities and differences between the atomic and uh, the solid state uh, high harmonic generation process. Um, this is a uh, nice work um, done by um, George Dabasimi uh, from our group. Uh, he did the experiment. This is the sample of uh, solid argon. Um, this is the measured uh, spectrum, and uh, you can see there is a you know there is a there there are actually you know two plateau uh, like features uh, that we observed in solids for the first time, um, and. Uh, uh, so the first uh, plateau extends to almost uh, it about up to the atomic, uh, you know, limit, and there is this, uh, you know, secondary plateau that is, you know, uh, not there in the gas phase. So the idea was to compare the gas and solid in the same experimental conditions uh, of the laser parameters, um, and uh, 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 and also uh, this is the high energy cutoff um, as a function of laser intensity. For the gas phase, we reproduce this uh, linear scaling, but uh, for solids, uh, both for solid argon and uh, krypton, uh, there is uh, you know, something very different. Um, and this second plateau really kicks in at certain peak intensities, actually two different intensities for uh, different uh, um, solids, depending on their ionization uh, thresholds. Um, and uh, this, uh, these uh, you know second plateau features so we um, understand this uh, in, in, um, in collaboratively um, in our theoretical uh, work uh, uh, with uh, the group of uh, Mira Guard. Uh, this is among Shi Wu, our former students in the group at the time. Um, so for the more um, on this, uh, please uh, uh, you know, read uh, this uh, paper. Um, as I cited here, and for uh, today's uh, discussion, I will focus uh, more on uh, the new stuff. So, uh, so we we uh, we got this uh, preview of uh, you know uh, uh, the first decade of uh, solid state harmonics, uh, which uh, mainly, in my opinion, focused on understanding the microscopic mechanism. Um, and this is it's still interesting, but we we have to turn our face. Um, and I think uh, the next decade uh, should be uh, actually using this uh, nice, uh, you know, uh, um, and this as a nice spectroscopic tool to um, solve uh, important material science problems. So I will give you um, two examples here. Um, so one uh, uh, is here. Uh, so this is the this nice uh, theoretical prediction from uh, Anel Reviews group. Uh, right, and also um, actually pretty um, uh, well studied uh, at least theoretically now uh, by several groups. Um, and the the light field, uh, you know, um, induced uh, electronic states in materials uh, such as doing floquet engineering, um, and uh, especially with the use of uh, circularly polarized uh, fields, you can make uh, these oil uh, cones uh, non regenerate in the momentum space and move them around in a controlled fashion. Similarly, another example uh, is uh, uh, the nice work, uh, again, a theoretical uh, from the group of Misha Ivanov, where they um, argued that in 2D uh, materials, um, you know, which is uh, not topological to start with, you could uh, use the light field, uh, the waveform controlled light uh, field to actually generate uh, you know, topology. So these are uh, kind of, um, you know, these are actually, you know, 
uh, pretty big predictions, uh, you know, and, and important uh, problems uh, for solid state. So what we can offer as uh, you know, from the high harmonic side is, you know, to be able to probe these uh, electronic states uh, and because, uh, you know, we have this all optical method and that works uh, in presence of the strong field um, and provides uh, with, uh, you know, naturally provides with uh, the short, um, you know, time resolution that uh, we need. Okay, so I will now uh, show uh, two examples, um, ex you know, of uh, experiments. And the first um, is uh, on topological insulators. Um, so let me just uh, give a brief introduction of what this is. Um, and uh, so this is uh, the first, uh, you know, uh, the ARPAS uh, measurement uh, on um, where um, they were able, able to nicely see uh, the band structure on uh, bismuth selenide. You can see uh, here, uh, these are uh, the, you know, the, the bulk bands um, with high intensities, the valence band and conduction band. And there is certain band gap, right? Um, and, uh, um, and, and also, this is a nice, uh, you know, um, Dirac cone that does not have any band gap. So valence and conduction bands, these are the surface states. So this is uh, the, the nice uh, signature of uh, topological insulators. Um, you, know, you have the bulk uh, insulating and the surface uh, is, uh, uh, you know, does not have band gap. And also these states are uh, time reversal symmetry uh, protected. Okay, so in terms of the high harmonic uh, spectroscopy, what we like to know is uh, what is the signature of uh, such a topology in our spectrum, right? And uh, how can we separate the contributions from the surface states uh, and the bulk um, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and a couple other uh, questions that I put out here, essentially you know, for the community to figure out uh, in the next years to come. Um, in order to realize uh, this experimentally, uh, Danitza uh, Bekushiva did uh, this, uh, put together this nice experimental uh, setup uh, and she was able to um, produce it a tunable mid infrared laser uh, field and do these experiments. Um, she took uh, thin films, uh, single crystal thin films and did experiments in the transmission and the bulk, um, uh, uh, freshly clipped uh, bulk um, samples in the reflection geometry because bulk uh, have um, uh, you know, they absorb um, the harmonics. Uh, so this is one of the uh, measured uh, spectrum that has uh, both uh, odd and even order harmonics, and that becomes really useful. Uh, the first uh, set of results were um, published uh, in, in Clio of uh, 2019, um, and uh, uh, so this is. Uh, um, for uh, the, you know, the, these are detailed uh, polarization analysis um, of uh, harmonics. So let me uh, run this uh, through in more detail. Um, so this is the bismuth selenide crystal again with uh, this you know this uh, uh, crystal structure. Uh, this uh, this is a layered material uh, that has bismuth and selenium as alternating layers, and this is one unit of uh, the system called the quintuple layers that because it has this uh, you know five alternating layers. Um, when you um, look at uh, the system from the top in this uh, picture, um, and the, you know, which is the surface, um, and in this case, the surface uh, uh, does not have uh, inversion symmetry in some orientations, and that becomes really useful. Uh, here, this is the polarization result uh, measurement when the laser field is along the mirror plane. Okay, there are three mirror planes. So here, the laser field is along the mirror plane. In this condition, we see both even in order, uh, order harmonics all polarized along the laser field. But uh, when you um, um, when you rotate the crystal and the polarization is now uh, uh, you know thirty degree away, right? Not along the mirror plane. Uh, then what happens is uh, you know not, we, we not only uh, produce a significant amount of even orders, but also these even orders like, you know, harmonic eight, uh, you know, this, it, it's a polarization gets uh, flipped uh, and goes towards, uh, you know, in the, in the actually to the perpendicular direction um, compared to the laser field and um, to other um, odd, um, other harmonics. So uh, to understand uh, the microscopic origin of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the harmonics uh, in this topological insulators, uh, we, uh, we um, resort to this uh, tight binding model, uh, 
we start with uh, this Hamiltonian and we um, produce um, and this um, band structure for the bulk. Uh, and this is the uh, surface mode, as you can see, nice uh, Dirac cone uh, formed by the valence and conduction bands on the surface. And these are uh, the, uh, the, uh, and the spin polarizations uh, for uh, valence and conduction bands of the surface. As you expect, uh, we have uh, this spin momentum log configurations uh, in, in the, uh, you know, the, the signature of topological insulators. Um, and uh, uh, and then we uh, use uh, the semiconductor block equations. Uh, this is one of the standard uh, methods to produce harmonics uh, and elderly um, in the literature. Um, and uh, in this case, we use two bands uh, for the surface um, and uh, two bands uh, for the bulk as uh, shown here, and they are treated uh, independently. Um, so this is uh, the, um, the population. Um, in a time dependent population. Uh, this is uh, the time dependent uh, polarization. And uh, these are usual parameters uh, in the semiconductor block equations, uh, including this uh, T2, which is uh, known as the dephasing time um, in the field. And, and this uh, has been uh, actually a problem um, in, in terms of how you use in these equations. And we, you know, the, the you know, so far it has been uh, used phenomenologically, and this is also what we do here. But later, if I have time, I will show you how we actually turn this into uh, a useful tool. Okay, uh, so from these equations, we have now um, intraband and intraband uh, uh, currents, and we sum them up um, and uh, we calculate, uh, then, then you come into the nice uh, harmonic spectrum, okay? So these are, Results for, um, again, for a linear polarization case, uh, the bulk uh, results, um, you can see, they have uh, only odd order harmonics uh, and they don't um, depend on the orientation that much, um, you know, meaning that uh, along gamma to M and gamma to K, they are very similar. But in the surface uh, case, uh, you have additional even order harmonics. And, um, um, so something to notice here is when the laser field is um, uh, is flipped uh, from the mirror plane, along, which is this is along the laser uh, al along the along the uh, uh, mirror plane, the dashed line. When the laser field is uh, flipped from um, you know mirror plane to ninety degree, then the uh, these um, even orders um, um, are polarized uh, perpendicular and their intensity uh, become relatively high, okay? So very similar to what we observe experimentally, uh, the, the even uh, harmonics are polarized uh, largely orthogonal to the uh, laser field. Now, um, uh, you know, I should note that uh, just uh, observing even order harmonics uh, only tells you about uh, the symmetry of the system, right? tells you that the symmetry is, uh, inversion symmetry is broken. Uh, and that's, that's uh, pretty much uh, all uh, it tells you. Um, so we, we were interested uh, to actually find uh, the signature of the topology of the system. Uh, so uh, the approach we take here is we study the, the polarization dependence uh, of uh, harmonics. This is actually a, a very typical uh, ellipticity uh, dependent uh, scan, uh, right, um, as, as we know uh, from the gas phase uh, methods. Uh, this is the intensity of uh, a harmonic uh, uh, as, and, and we change the ellipticity from uh, zero to uh, in the small, small steps uh, to one. You can see uh, that uh, the, uh, the bulk, uh, this is the bulk in uh, open uh, diamond, uh, also noted by B, the bulk uh, response is very similar to atomic light. You know where the the signal goes down as you change the as the ellipticity becomes larger and for circular polarization there is nothing okay uh, but the surface state uh, you know this is the uh, the solid circles um, the the response is completely opposite uh, you know it it actually grows uh, the intensity grows as a function of, as the ellipticity grows and in this case for fifth harmonic it becomes uh, maximum. Uh, for circular polarization. And this, uh, in, there is a similar trending for um, all harmonics, uh, slightly uh, different um, on where exactly they pick up uh, the maxima. 
but there is a general trending uh, that uh, the emission from the surface states uh, um, are uh, much more efficient uh, for uh, elliptically polarized fluids. So what's the origin, right? So what's, what, what is it uh, that in the topological system that uh, you know, it's contributing to uh, such uh, anomalous enhancement uh, for circularly polarized fields? Okay, so this is um, um, the spin polarization of, uh, uh, of one of the uh, surface bands. Um, and uh, uh, the way to understand this uh, is, uh, you know, if you um, look at our tight binding model, um, you know, there are certain coefficients in the, in this, uh, um, in this model that uh, can be attributed to the uh, you know, spin polarization. Uh, so if you look at this uh, picture at the, around the zone center, uh, around the zero momentum spin is in plane. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you go further um, out in the Berlin zone, uh, then the, this uh, hot colors represent out of plane uh, spin. So this is essentially the ratio of these two A12 and A14 that gives you this polarization. And, uh, um, and uh, since this is uh, the model, right? So we can treat these parameters uh, and see. So we'll, and see what happens to our harmonic spectrum. So we find that uh, when you increase the ratio between these two uh, parameters in a way that you know, the ratio is higher for uh, when these out of uh, plane polarization is higher, uh, we see a very strong change, uh, enhancement in the harmonic signal. Um, so when you know, so this uh, tells us uh, that uh, the 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 origin of uh, the enhancement for circular polarization comes from the uh, particularly from the out of plane uh, spin polarization. This can be also um, discussed uh, in the context of uh, the the uh, interband uh, dipole uh, between these two bands. Uh, here, uh, this is the uh, dipole uh, moment that is uh, plotted, uh, the real part, uh, and this is the imaginary part. And uh, again, this, because this is model, you can, you can tweak things and, uh, and see uh, what affects what, right? And what we find out is that, uh, um, you know, the, the lower um, order harmonics um, correspond to uh, this uh, vortex-like uh, feature that is present uh, at the, uh, you know, at the Dirac point, okay? And uh, these high order harmonics uh, are, um, are mostly affected uh, by this, uh, you know, um, the, the, these features uh, that are present uh, at the um, high momentum places uh, in, the, uh, in the Berlin zone. So this is from the, this is the unique uh, feature of the topological surface states. You, you will not have these, uh, these features in the bulk, right? For example, um, you know, this is um, uh, the bulk bands. Uh, they uh, have a minima, not at the zone center, slightly away. And also they don't have these vortex features, uh, uh, right, in the uh, transition dipoles. Um, and uh, um, so, uh, so this is, uh, you know, uh, clearly uh, the signature of the topological surface states, uh, uh, you know, that gives rise to the enhancement for uh, circular polarization. Okay, so this is, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the theory on the bottom and uh, the experimental results, uh, our representative uh, measurement is shown on the top. And uh, you can see that the, in the, you know, the theory, especially the, the response from the surface states uh, more or less uh, reproduces uh, the experimental observation. Uh, these are uh, the drawbacks, uh, the limitations of our model. Uh, this, this could be really uh, important for, for uh, experts in the field. Uh, so I refer um, um, you, you to um, our uh, publication, uh, this is a PRA. So that's the, that's the reference, uh, PRA, uh, for um, all the details. And uh, mainly, uh, the, 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 um, the surface and bulk bands are treated separately. Um, and also the, the band structure that we um, calculate uh, is, is, you know, especially at the high momentum places, not, uh, you know, it's, there, there are some deviations uh, from the um, ARPA's measurement uh, and that could be improved. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, if you ask me what is next uh, in, in, you know, in, in this uh, uh, topology, in the field of topological insulators, uh, 
you know, the, it would be really interesting to uh, be able to um, probe uh, the topological, uh, in, you know, invariance of the system. I didn't think we, we know quite, you know, we, we know how to do that uh, in, in 3D systems yet, uh, but uh, uh, there are uh, really nice um, theory work uh, that are appearing, at least in model system. This is uh, the nice, uh, um, you know, uh, calculation results from uh, Bauer group uh, in one D system uh, and uh, another nice work on Haldane uh, system uh, from uh, Misha Ivanov groups as well as a similar work uh, by Alexi uh, Sakon uh, in this reference in PRB. Um, so, um, so I'm gonna now uh, with that uh, uh, gesture, right? Uh, so now the, the challenge is on theories to uh, come up with uh, a theoretical method for the uh, 3D topological systems to deduce uh, topological invariance. Um, so now I, uh, for the rest of the time, uh, I, I move to uh, the 2D uh, crystals. Um, so far, uh, let me uh, maybe pause for seconds and see if there are any questions. Okay, so now um, uh, in the in the 2D um, systems, uh, first of all, why uh, 2D uh, crystals are interesting. So one uh, thing is, as as you can see in these uh, pictures, um, in the case of a bulk, right? If you if, if you consider uh, this exciton, like you know, basically a hydrogenic uh, system where you have uh, the the positive and negative, uh, like you know, electron and hole, if you like. Um, in, in, in the case of 2D uh, systems, uh, the, um, um, there is a you know, significantly reduced uh, screening, as you can see, right? These, uh, these field lines uh, do not need to go through the dielectric medium. So you have the opportunity where you, know, you, you can uh, manipulate uh, the electronic structure of the 2D system itself. You have the opportunity to bring another you know, uh, a monolayer next to this, uh, and uh, um, you know, and and um, really, uh, you know, have the opportunity to explore a, a, a new energy, uh, you know, scale uh, in in the electronic band structure, um, and uh, so I you know, that's that's one um, uh, possibility. The other is. Uh, uh, the you know you know there is uh, a lot of interest uh, on using 2D uh, systems uh, to um, develop uh, what's called the flexible electronics uh, right so this is one nice example that's shown here from recent uh, publication um, so here you know you you want to be able to characterize uh, this uh, 2D systems and typically you use by using uh, you know you you. Uh, probe uh, the thermal properties by using uh, contacts, uh, and that's that's a big issue. And uh, you know, if you could uh, probe all optically, uh, such as through high harmonics, right? You could uh, potentially solve this problem, right? So two D systems um, are you know they are monolayers, and, and uh, they you know they they are essentially swamped uh, when you put uh, large electrodes. Um, uh, so that's that's the other uh, application. Uh, this is uh, the first observation of uh, you know uh, high harmonics from a monolayer um, MOS2. Uh, this was done by uh, Hang Zhou Lu, a student, a former student in our group. Um, so here, uh, this is the crystal structure of uh, MOS2 um, uh, for the bulk, um, and when you um, and, you know, basically uh, peel off uh, uh, the first uh, layer, right? And, uh, um, and, 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 you know, and put it on substrate and you uh, observe um, high harmonics uh, from that system in a single layer. And as you can see in the bulk, uh, you know, there is, this is a mirror plane uh, because every layers, they sort of get averaged over and, and it becomes, um, uh, you know, it, it, it uh, has the inversion symmetry. But when you take uh, this, just the single layer out and put it somewhere, uh, then you have uh, some orientations where you actually break inversion symmetry. And you can see uh, this, this signature in the form of uh, these even order harmonics. Yeah, it's shown here. Um, and, uh, 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 and as I as said earlier, um, you know, the, so uh, what we did is we measured the polarization uh, of uh, these harmonics and found, that, found uh, out that 
Even others are actually polarized, uh, very similar to bismuth selenide uh, in the perpendicular direction. In, in the you know, reminiscence of uh, the Hall effect. Um, uh, so this could be a, an all optical approach, um, again, to uh, probe uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, interesting uh, physical properties uh, of the uh, 2D systems. And recently, uh, we have uh, more uh, um, people interested on in this, and uh, these, these are um, students and postdocs uh, in our groups, uh, uh, and they're uh, doing this wonderful work of actually taking this into a new level. Um, so here, um, now, uh, we wanted to uh, you know, take the opportunity of uh, this uh, synthesis uh, of materials, uh, right, where we can um, stack these uh, materials in different configurations, um, such as shown here. This is the AA stack. Uh, you basically take these layers uh, out and rotate them um, and put them together in a way that uh, the alignment, uh, you know, the, the, all these atoms are uh, lined up. Um, and, uh, and we look at the harmonics. Uh, first, uh, this is the harmonic spectrum. Uh, as a function of uh, number of layers, they are uh, put together in AA uh, configurations, and you can see a nice uh, increase of harmonic signal, right? The increasing harmonic signal is always nice. Um, now, uh, this is, uh, you, you know, you can uh, see the, the scaling, uh, for example, the seventh uh, order harmonic scales uh, quadratically pretty nicely uh, as a function of number of layers. And um, um, in, in the other configurations, uh, such as AB configuration uh, and AAB configurations here, you know, you, you go, you know, for example, in AB, um, you know, you, uh, and, you know, reduce uh, the signal of uh, even orders, uh, you know, just because of the, um, the, the system recovers the inverse symmetry, right? Uh, uh, and, uh, and so on. So, you, you know, this is the, uh, the entire spectrum as a function of number of layers. And you can see uh, a fairly nice uh, you know, quadratic increase um, in the harmonic intensity, uh, but some, some deviations, uh, for example, here uh, for 12th harmonic, uh, you know, this harmonic is above the band gap. And, uh, you know, we can kind of see where the absorption starts to kick in. And um, this is the, uh, uh, you know, as, as the comparison, uh, we also measured the second harmonic, uh, and that's, uh, of course, uh, nicely uh, quadratic uh, for the AA configurations. Okay, so now, um, uh, really towards the end, uh, I, I promised uh, earlier that this T2, uh, which has been a problem in the field, and, uh, um, and the problem is, let me just remind this uh, to everyone so, so people will know what the problem is. And when we uh, try to uh, uh, use this as a feature. Um, so this is the harmonic spectrum uh, and as a function of this uh, T2. Um, so um, if you do not uh, introduce this uh, you know, dephasing parameter T2, the spectrum really becomes uh, pretty messy. Um, it doesn't give you a, a discrete, um, you know, peaks uh, in the harmonic spectrum. So, uh, so um, we introduced this uh, parameter to basically clean up. So the idea is that since the harmonic generation process is a coherent process, right? The electron and hole uh, they they um, um, they recombine coherently, uh, and. Uh, uh, um, uh, and we, we wanted to use this uh, feature. So what we do is we now we, uh, we try to put in some carriers uh, uh, to begin with. Um, and uh, that changes the dephasing because you have a, a, a large amount of carriers uh, to start with um, in the conduction band. Um, and uh, this is the experiment uh, here. We uh, again use uh, MOS2. Uh, in the pump, uh, we have uh, the above band gap pump um, at around uh, you know 600 nanometer, um, and uh, um, we uh, uh, produce uh, harmonics uh, using a five micron uh, probe, and uh, these are uh, so there, there will be results here. Uh, first, uh, this is uh, the way to estimate uh, the number of carriers uh, just from a standard. Uh, you know, pump probe measurements um, using the, you know, the, the visible pump, visible probe. 
Um, and uh, this is, yeah, this is the harmonic spectrum. So these are harmonic orders. Uh, and uh, you can see for a different amount of the uh, pump fluence, right? So on this scale, the pump uh, fluence is increasing. And uh, you can see uh, this harmonic intensity is going down, okay? Uh, so, uh, so these are the, um, the quantitative plots. Uh, what you can see is, uh, you know, if you focus on certain harmonic uh, as a function of uh, the pump uh, fluence, the harmonic intensity is going down, right? And this occurs on every harmonics. And notably, uh, the higher order harmonics uh, are reduced uh, further compared to the relatively lower order harmonics. And uh, you know, you can do um, the, you know some pitting here. And the idea is that uh, you know, if you um, had a certain T two uh, in the system uh, as the uh, as the you know standard. Uh, um, uh, as as you know, so where we normalize things to, um, and you uh, know, as a function of uh, carrier density, um, you know, this this is the these are the uh, uh, the how harmonic intensity is, is going down, uh, and uh, the 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 solid line is uh, uh, the scaling that we um, you know that uh, um, is is close to the you know um, the, the theoretical. Uh, predictions uh, of uh, how the change in T2 uh, reduces uh, the harmonic intensity in the semiconductor block equations. Okay, so now uh, uh, towards the end, uh, I, I wanted to now uh, summarize and provide some outlook. As we heard, um, and this is uh, really for the, uh, for the community in terms of uh, where we are and what is uh, the next. Um, and. Uh, uh, so, uh, so as as we know, you know the high harmonic spectroscopy has been uh, quite successful in many aspects uh, in terms of uh, probing uh, structure and dynamics in atomic and molecular systems for some time now, right? Um, and uh, uh, we have had uh, the first decade of uh, solid state high harmonics where we uh, we studied the similarities and differences uh, between solids and uh, gases and the study still continues, uh, but uh, uh, now we are we are uh, you know trying to turn our pace uh, and uh, uh, use uh, this as a spectroscopic tool, kind of similar to in uh, molecular systems, um, to uh, hopefully uh, solve uh, interesting material science problems. Uh, one example uh, was uh, to be able to. Um, study the topology and maybe, uh, you know, since these are harmonics, uh, maybe we could do, um, we could probe uh, the topological states uh, like, you know, changes uh, in phase transitions, uh, for example, um, of the uh, topology. And similarly, uh, you know, with the combination of a strong laser field and, uh, you know, the, uh, some interesting materials, uh, there's uh, a lot you could do. Um, and there are uh, several theoretical predictions already, uh, but uh, what is missing is the probe uh, and uh, harmonics uh, could uh, you know, just do that. And especially since we produce uh, harmonics for elliptically polarized, uh, right? Even circularly polarized laser fields in the case of the topological systems, this is just the right thing to do. Um, and uh, this is what we expect uh, you know, as, as you know, in the community, uh, you know, we, we um, hope to make progress in that direction. Okay, just uh, to more specific, specifically uh, summarize my talk, uh, I gave uh, some examples, um, you know, one example of uh, the success in high harmonic spectroscopy in the gas phase. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and we explored uh, by not only my group, uh, actually several groups uh, around the globe. I'm actually quite honored uh, that many groups uh, have uh, produced, uh, reproduced uh, our um, original experimental results, uh, and, and they have taken this to a very new, in a, a new level. Uh, this is the um, example in magnesium oxide crystal that we looked, uh, where we argued that the uh, harmonics could um, probe the valence charge distributions uh, similar to the, the molecular systems. We talked about uh, the possibility of uh, probing topology. Uh, I give uh, uh, examples uh, of uh, bismuth selenide uh, and bismuth uh, telluride. 
Um, and the, the, the signature of the topology comes with the um, enhancement uh, of uh, harmonics uh, with uh, elliptically and uh, circularly polarized fields. Um, I gave you some, uh, so showed you some uh, initial results uh, on, uh, you know, this uh, TMD stacked uh, materials, uh, and uh, uh, there, there is uh, more uh, coming at, you know, that will bring us towards, uh, you know, hopefully towards a uh, strong field of more A physics. Um, that would be really nice. Uh, you know, it could be uh, something nice to surprise the condensed matter physics community, uh, right, with, uh, in terms of uh, the strengths of, uh, um, high harmonics. Uh, so if you are interested uh, to learn more um, of uh, more on this topic of uh, solid state high harmonics, uh, these are two review articles um, I recommend. Uh, the first one is uh, in nature uh, physics um, and uh, the second is, uh, is more like the perspective in nature communications. Um, and um, these are largely focused uh, on representing uh, the experimental progress. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, if you're, if you have uh, students uh, maybe graduating soon from your groups, uh, um, they may be interested uh, to the postdoctoral opportunities that uh, are available at Stanford. Um, and uh, finally, I thank uh, my wonderful set of uh, colleagues and I thank uh, everyone for your attention. Now I will be happy to take any questions. So thank you, Shambhu, for this really great talk. Uh, our first question is from John Marangos uh, from Imperial. And he is saying, hi, Shambhu, great talk. What is the magnitude of the laser fields you use in your experiments and how to limit and control any damage that it might induce? Yeah, so it really, um, you know, hi, John, uh, uh, nice, nice to be connecting with you. Um, hey, Jambu, uh, I think you can probably hear me, so I would have uh, read my question out myself, but uh, great talk. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the peak intensity is uh, you know, slightly depends on materials, it's smaller the band gap, uh, right? They get uh, damaged uh, at the lower uh, peak intensities. Uh, for example, for magnesium oxide uh, crystals, uh, you know, the range of uh, 10 to the 12 watt per centimeter square is just fine because of the large band gap. Uh, and for smaller band gap materials like topological insulators, um, you, know, you, you know, they, they can take up to, uh, you know, uh, almost up to 10 to the 10 watt per centimeter square, two others uh, lowers. Uh, but uh, in terms of the scaling, you know, just because the band gap is lower, right, you could uh, still, um, you know, it, you know, achieve the same uh, you know, scaling in terms of uh, you know non-perforative uh, response of uh, harmonics. Um, yeah, so the dam damage is still the issue, but the idea is you know to if you have really short pulse, you could do you could uh, uh, do some, you know some really nice things on even on topological systems. Uh, short pulses, uh, you know, avoid the damage. Uh, also, uh, you know, longer wavelengths uh, help. Uh, but I, I have a sort of a follow-up question. I, I guess it's much more practical. Um, I mean, presumably you do damage samples from time to time. And I, I'm wondering how many shots does a typical sample take before you have to move to a different location? And obviously in more complex structures where the, 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 the interesting locations are very, very localized, uh, that may be challenging. Thank you, yeah, thank you for that question. That actually helps me clarify. So in all these uh, experiments, we do not uh, damage the samples at all. We actually use the same sample, you know, for, you know, sometime over six months. Uh, so I would say that in the gas phase, you damage the sample, <laughs> you know, right? Uh, in, in, in the context that you fully ionize. Um, uh, in, in solid materials, of course, uh, you know, if you hit it really hard, you could burn, uh, but, uh, you know, all the measurements that I showed, uh, they, uh, the samples uh, are used uh, for repetitive excitations uh, at uh, kilohertz, and uh, the same samples um, are being used for a long time. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So we have another question, and first a greeting from Alexis Chacon. He sends you good evening from Korea, and he really liked your talk. And we have also a question from Shankar Bharata Chandra. 
So she's saying, I'm Chan Chan Kabarata Chandra from India. I worked on Hey Hey G in Gas Face in IISC India. My question is from the high harmonic generation part. Is there any possibility to absorb the generated high harmonic being by a uh, ZNO sample? If yes, then could you please tell me how much is the absorbance uh, during the high harmonic generation? Yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, for the questions. Uh, first, uh, uh, thanks, uh, Alexis, uh, for the nice words. It's, it's been a pleasure working with you uh, in the theory of topological insulators. Uh, and uh, now uh, to the uh, question uh, from um, Sankar uh, Bhakta. Um, the, the absorption uh, is the, you know, certainly the issue uh, because uh, most of the harmonics uh, that I showed are above the band gap. Uh, but uh, because of the uh, you know high density on solids, uh, right? So even if you can excite uh, harmonics uh, for um, one attenuation length, uh, for example, in zinc oxide, it can be about uh, you know 50 nanometers. Uh, that's lots of materials. Uh, so what we uh, uh, do is, especially in, in the first experiment, what I did was uh, since the sample was uh, pretty thick, half a millimeter, we focused uh, towards the back of the crystal. And, uh, and minimized uh, you know, the absorption. Minimized meaning that you know, mostly the harmonics are you know, uh, produced uh, and, uh, um, from the uh, exit side uh, of the crystal. So that's typical. And uh, um, yeah, so it's the uh, you know, uh, good attenuation length uh, of uh, solid uh, still uh, gives you a lot of materials uh, to, to use. So is, is the question fine? Would you like to follow up? Uh, Sanka Brata, would you like to follow up in the question? Or is this fine? It's fine, okay, thank you. Are there further questions or comments? Uh, yes, we have some question from Soan Saha. What do you believe will be a true breakthrough in solid state hey, hey, G? Is it operating at lower powers, higher efficiency? Yeah, so uh, it, I think it de depends uh, on who you are in terms of the breakthrough. And there are several groups, right, uh, who are uh, interested to use this as a source, uh, as a compact uh, attosecond light source. Uh, so that could be a breakthrough there. Uh, for example, when you combine with uh, relatively you know, um, uh, small peak power laser systems uh, such as fiber lasers. Uh, so what uh, personally I'm interested in is uh, to use uh, this as a, an, you know, a spectroscopic tool to, um, you know, solve uh, important uh, material science problems. Um, so that could be, you know, for example, the, the if you can actually uh, follow the topological uh, phase transitions uh, that is uh, induced uh, by, uh, you know, light field, for example, um, that, that would be a big breakthrough in terms of uh, the spectroscopy. So other groups, uh, you know, who are focusing on, uh, you, you know, uh, probing the band structure, right? So they may say uh, that, uh, you know, if you can probe um, the conduction bands, uh, especially on dielectrics, uh, probing conduction bands uh, are, it, it's difficult since they are unoccupied, right? And especially if you need to probe band structure in extreme conditions, uh, such as in presence of uh, uh, the you know uh, pressure um, and and uh, uh, other parameters, uh, so that that would be um, one interesting ap applications there. So personally, I would think uh, you, know, you, you know this uh, would be a good uh, tool, a spectroscopic tool, uh, to uh, probe uh, uh, you know the, the materials and uh, the, you know, it's both structure and dynamics in interesting materials. Did I answer your question? My questions, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Thank you. Are there further questions, comments? Um, we're going to stop the streaming soon. So if every, anybody would like to talk uh, to our speaker more privately, without it being broadcast in the internet, just hang in there and you have the opportunity. Otherwise we'll continue with the questions. Uh, you mentioned, I have one question, you mentioned at the very end about the coherence. 
because this is an interesting question because uh, a harmonic generation is a highly coherent process. And I would imagine that in a solid, there are several things taking place that you could have, for instance, transfer of energy uh, in terms of vibration, that you would have noise. How do you minimize this? Yeah, absolutely. So there is, uh, you know, it's, it's a solid, right? <laughs> you know, it's, it's got, uh, you know, lots of uh, things going on, but uh, also, these uh, things have different time scales, uh, you know, luckily. Uh, for example, the, the vibrations, uh, various phonon modes um, that uh, you know, some experiments actually probe, uh, they have, uh, you know, relatively um, uh, long time scales. Uh, so even in the, um, the uh, MOS2 experiments, uh, you know, we uh, probe, uh, you know, for example, potentially a thermal uh, effects uh, at really long time scales. Uh, so you you have um, you know the in, in especially in the pump rope setting uh, you have the the possibility of uh, separating uh, these uh, different processes uh, for example by probing at uh, different times. Mm -hmm. So what I argued is that uh, the this uh, the coherence was um, you know strong field excited electron and hole right in in the material system. Um, so there is a coherence uh, between the, the electron and hole that you excite uh, with the strong field. And when they recombine, the harmonics are produced, right? So there are lots of things uh, in solids uh, which would like to prevent this uh, coherent uh, recombination. Okay, so this was, I think, one of the reasons why it was difficult to even observe uh, high harmonics from solids in the first place. Right, there are various dephasing uh, processes they essentially kill. So you have to be able to uh, drive electron and hole very fast uh, and have them recombine. Uh, and this is just what a uh, strong field, um, you know, does as we know in the gas phase, right? Um, and uh, these uh, recombinations occur on the subcycle time scales. So this is, they basically beat uh, the, uh, the the dephasing uh, processes of solids. Uh, so. Yeah, so that, that's the idea of coherence, right? And then uh, you use uh, different uh, um, delay uh, delays, uh, you know, and, and depending on materials. Um, and uh, actually you could, um, you know, utilize, uh, you know, this uh, the fact that uh, you know, various uh, processes such as uh, the lattice, right? The, the response of the lattice uh, usually comes uh, at, you know, at slightly slower, certainly slightly slower than sub-cycle time scales. Um, yeah, so, but it's uh, it's really exciting. So we're I think really uh, you know the community is moving towards uh, just that to be able to uh, explore materials. Uh, it, it you know and, and, and maybe the spins and maybe the lattice and and, and uh, things like that. And of course you have to be really careful, right? Uh, in in terms of uh, the their time scales and you have to have good theory. Yes, definitely. And yeah, it seems yeah. to be quite challenging, but also interesting as well. Right. Yes, so uh, thank you so much. There's a raised hand, let me see. Uh, somehow I cannot see who is raising the hand. Should be on top, but yeah, you know, is this maybe mine? No, no, it's not mine. Anyway, uh, yeah. It looks like Alexi had, uh, I guess he, he tried to clarify further the, the point of uh, uh, the uh, time scales. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Alexis. I can see. So uh, Alexis said that the phonon scale is about picoseconds or larger. So in solids, we drive with 500 femtoseconds or close to it. So absolutely good question of coherence, Gala. AHG from solids should keep the coherent. Yes, so thank you, because I mean, I've never worked on solids. So um, is the first question that goes to your mind uh, is, okay, how about coherence? And uh, what can we do about it? And how, how is this going to, to, to work? And uh, we have also uh, Daniel Payne. Thanks for the great talk, Shambu. What is the outlook for HAG measurements of superfluids? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I haven't, uh, you know, thought about this uh, uh, 
you know myself uh, but i know there are people who are thinking along those lines uh, about uh, along the lines of uh, superfluids okay very good so there is a raised hand from ruda Kaf kafley good uh, hello uh, yeah this hello. is uh, uh, can you hear me yes we can yeah thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and uh, this is a very nice talk uh, uh, but i i have a very trivial question so uh, it looks like that the system is dissipative, like because there is uh, this uh, energy release uh, continuously. So how do these co uh, the coherence and dissipation, how do they go together? Uh, a very a trivial question probably for you, but uh, I have this question. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the, the question. Uh, so the, the, you know, in, in the, uh, the excitation here is uh, uh, non-resonant and below threshold, meaning that uh, typically the photon energy is much, much lower than the band gap, right? So in that sense, you know, the usual um, energy deposition is actually very low. So uh, if the photon energy was higher than the band gap, then you would uh, deposit, uh, you know, lots of carriers, right? And uh, um, so in, in that sense, we start uh, with a, a fairly robust uh, system. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, the excitation is uh, completely off resonant below threshold uh, and the amount of energy that is deposited uh, in the sample is, is, is pretty small. So for example, uh, experimentally, the laser goes through the sample, right? Most of the laser actually comes out from the other side. So what we use is the electric field, uh, the, the strong electric field that the laser provides at the focus uh, that drives the these um, interesting you know, uh, uh, you know dynamics and that gives rise to generation of harmonics. Uh, Thank you. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yes, and we have another uh, raised hand from uh, Sohan Saha. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a couple of questions. So have you looked at uh, uh, high, high quality factor resonators or a bound state in continuum surfaces or meta surfaces to kind of enhance the HHG emission? And a follow-up question would be, um, is there a case for trying to tune it using a degenerate form probe setup or uh, tuning the efficiency of HHG using an electrical control or something, or are we still too early in the game for uh, looking at those? Yeah, so um, um, the first question was on the meta surface. Um, yeah, so we we did one experiment uh, on on um, on meta surface uh, in our groups, um, um, and uh, basically you right. So you you find uh, you know resonant. Uh, the meta surface that is resonant uh, to the, um, the laser frequency, uh, and uh, so so yeah, that's that's an an, you know, an interesting avenue uh, to you know um, in, you know opti optimize the generation efficiency as well as to learn about uh, the met meta materials. Uh, and uh, the second question was uh, the electrical uh, the use of electrical uh, methods, right? Uh, I think you mean by providing uh, some external electric fields. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, it it's could be, you know, something that could be really interesting for 2D systems. Uh, because in the 2D systems, uh, you know, that approach that, you know, that you mentioned uh, has already been used to, right, optimize um, electronic structure of the 2D systems. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, we could just uh, start from there um, to um, look at uh, high harmonics uh, as a function of uh, such controls, so, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, questions. I'm, I'm really glad to see that there's a lot of participation today. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to stop the streaming. So those who are watching via our YouTube link, thank you so much for joining. Um, we are going to go off records now. And thank you for supporting the initiative. Next week, we're going to have Professor Fernando Martin from uh, Madrid. And we're going to hear about molecules. And we thank uh, Dr. Ricky Meyer once more for this great talk. <laughs>